Mapuana. Hey, can I can I still call you Mapu? Is that of or, course? Or, I know because you know, like there was a thing where I was I was DJ for a while, and then I was like, only call me Dewan right oh, now. Oh, really? You were yeah. DJ? I was not a DJ, but Dewan Johnson and like people who couldn't say my name, Dewan, they always go to DJ because of my initials, oh. and so I didn't know if. Maybe Mapuana was there because you're like, just call me Mapu because you got tired of people saying Mapana, Mapuana. Right. Know. I was going to ask you, I'm like, what did people call you? Like, how do you mispronounce Dewan? Seriously. I just want to tell you that I was very familiar with the mustard. Dijon. Uh, oh, ooh, Dijon. <laughs> Dijon and all that. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I can call you Mapu, right? Absolutely. Okay, cool, cool. Yes, cool. absolutely. Mapu's good. Thank you yeah. for your Mapu. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Dewan. I, and this is my second season question, and I just want to ask you a hard hitting question um, just to get us started. Yeah. It's always a surprise. Let's jump in, and I'm going to, and, and it's going to be hard, but we're going to do it. Whew. Los Angeles or Vancouver? Oh, Oh, that is too hard. It's so interesting. Like, it's just watching your face. Everybody who's not watching this on YouTube, go and see her face right now. <laughs> you know, because they're so, you know what? I mean, right now I'm going to, I'm going to claim Vancouver because mm -hmm. this is where I'm at. Okay. But I have to say that there are such brilliant and amazing things about both cities. And I mean that genuinely. Yeah. But my experience working here has been really awesome. Oh, good. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's something about this market that's different. First of all, they call base camp circus, which is really fun. Come on, really? Yeah, that's fun. Um, yeah, and just the crews that I've been working with here have been just awesome oh. and just sort of down to earth, hardworking people. And I really love that about this, this town and how people work here. Yeah, yeah. Um, they sort of just get it done. Like they just get it done. I love it. And I, I really it. appreciate that about them. I want to, so I want to call everything a circus now that we're, now we're talking about it. Can we it just, just <laughs> makes it more, so much more fun. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll be at circus. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be at circus. Acting so. a fool. I'm going to be at circus <laughs> acting a fool right now. So. Yep. <laughs> Trying my best to act cool, but acting a fool. Acting a fool. That's. Man pretty much that's pretty much the podcast interview i think in a nutshell i think we're done right this, this has been great thank you so much no not until i get to talk to you about hawaii now i don't know if i know you're from hawaii right and i'm born and raised right you're born and raised in hawaii but i wasn't really sure and i couldn't get an answer when i deep dive were you yeah. shooting doogie in hawaii as well yes 100 percent oh. shot in hawaii which is yeah. incredible so you definitely did hit the actor jackpot. I mean, I, you're working at home kind of like with your family. I like, yeah, the lottery that I hit, I'm still, wow. even after I've shot, even after I'm watching episodes, I'm, you know, currently, cause it's on Disney plus everybody. If you haven't watched yet, please do. And hey, what show did you say? Disney plus is where I it's said, on? I said Disney plus. I said, Doogie Kamei Aloha MD. Disney plus. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's still, I still, I kind of still pinch. I'm still pinching myself a little bit and being like, oh, did that just happen? Um, when I was working in Hawaii, because I started acting in Hawaii, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was, I wanted to get on TV. I wanted to work in television. And I kept, every time I call my agent and be like, hey, what's up? What's up that role? Blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, you know what? They cast in LA. Sorry. They cast someone from LA. So that's, that started my journey. That started me from being like, well, shoot, they must be doing something in LA that I'm not doing. So, yeah. you know, that started the trajectory, which came back full circle. This was my dream, Dewan. My dream yeah. was to work at home, mm -hmm. was to get a role that I would be able to do at home. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to that, by the way, Mapu. Like a lot yeah. of actors out there can relate to one. I, I want to work in Chicago or Miami yeah. because my family's there. I get to work and see my family because so many of us transplant to new york yes. chicago new, you know la we go there for work and to go back home and work i think it's a little bit of validation also we've made it kind of like we're right like what's up grandpa hey oh, do you want to come to set yeah did you want to yeah <laughs> but i think a lot of people can definitely relate to that what you're I, saying yes i think you're right i think yeah if i'm if i'm being honest it is like a validation and you know 
the first time recently, like being in the newspaper, I was like, Ooh. I've made it. <laughs> My grandpa's going to see this. Yeah. yeah. No, but you know, being able to, to go to a day of work and mm -hmm. then, and then go to a Sunday dinner and get to see my family and yeah. sit around and, you know, we would play, we would play like this domino game every week. And yeah, there was not the, just the joining of worlds. And like you said, you know, you don't realize until, and then maybe it's till you get a little bit older, you don't realize the sacrifice that you're making, right. When you set out to do this big journey of acting and moving to Los Angeles that like you do, you, you miss your family, you miss, miss them so watching much. them grow up and, Birthdays. Watching my cousins grow up, birthdays and and luau's and all of these things, and especially you know, it sounds like you come from a hometown too. That's you know, family is pretty much everything. Like we're all we all hang out with each other. You know, yeah. I had I had uh, I didn't have many friends in college, but my, I had my cousin. Like mm -hmm. she was my best friend. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm happy you got to go back there. Are you back on the mainland as they call it? Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if that's, I'm, I'm trying to be cool no, with my lingo. No, I love it. Use it, Juan. You're doing great. It's the mainland. It's for the real. Mainland. Are you, you back got it. stateside? I was going to say stateside, but Hawaii is just, you know what I mean? So I can't say stateside. Right. Right? I know it feels like you, yeah, you should be able to, yeah, it feels like a different country. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, and I'm not even stateside. I'm all the way up here. I'm like, in Vancouver, which is another, yeah, I've been here for what, uh, this is probably my second year. Yeah. 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 Well, welcome, welcome, welcome back. And, you yeah. know, I, it's, it's so interesting because on the, on the one side, Mapu, I was thinking to myself, congratulations, right? Right. Like Thanks. this is so yeah. big and, you know, I'm always like loving supporting and saying, look at my friends go. I love that. Yeah, you do. You're so good at that. <laughs> I got actually, while I was looking for this link yeah. to meet up with you, I, I saw an email below that um, you're, it's gonna make me cry. It said, um, Hey, everyone look at Mapu. And it was a email from you just like acknowledging, yeah. you know, that I was doing a thing and it just, it touched me so much. So thank you. We got to make sure that we celebrate our friends' wins. You know, I know sometimes we look at other people's stuff and we're like, why not me? But also yeah. while you're in the why not me, also celebrate that. Like, you know what I mean? It's right. Because it really soon will be you. And you, you know can do I mean? both, right? You, oh, can, you, can do both. you can be like, uh -huh, I feel the feelings of that yeah. why not me, but also feel the joy of being in the same circle as somebody kicking butt and like yeah. making it happen, mm -hmm. you know? You are kicking butt. And you, you are, are, and you are kicking. <laughs> I love, I mean, our crew, I, I'm so, no. I'm so proud of all of us in all the so many different ways, you know, so now, I don't want to, I, I, I could listen. I have dad brain and I'm okay with that, but I don't, I don't remember. It's a little foggy. I feel like I remember you saying at some point to me or either in spaces that you were not taking a break, but you were just like, I'm just going to, I'm going to pause for a second. Am I making yeah. that up? you know, from acting like, it, I think it, you might be making some of it up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think what maybe what you're recalling is that I did sort of take, like, I went into a bird's eye view mode where I was like, okay, you like, I can still do the acting, but you know, that's not, that wasn't taking up all of my time. So Ooh, I did <laughs> right <laughs> time. So I did start like looking into shadow directing and I did start looking into producing some theater pieces and things like that. And just sort of, you know, evaluating. And then I thought maybe you were also talking about, I did take a pause during the pandemic, mm -hmm. not on purpose, but mm -hmm. I went like, <laughs> I went into VO mode because I wanted to start a voiceover business because I was like, well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little terrified of going back into waitressing because that was, I was a server and a bartender for so long. And that was a terrifying thought for me at the time. So that's how I started my voiceover business that went for a year before, uh, before Doogie. Right. 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 Yeah. I think it also might've been me just thinking when you were moving out of LA. Right. Right. I that think also what, feels like, right. right. Whenever someone moves, right. You I think, think it was, Oh yeah. No. And I, but it, you know, it was, it was get another boyfriend or, <laughs> <laughs> we like him though. Well, we're we like, like him so much so that much. it made he made me it made me make the decision to move with him because I just, you know, yeah, good ones are hard to find. And <laughs> I also <laughs> and also I was like, you know what? There's a market there. And 
maybe I can like see what happens when I go and play in this market and look at now I'm, I feel double fortunate because I get to play in both. Yeah. Yeah. No, all I, of the I, markets, actually, you're probably playing in Vancouver, Hawaii and LA and I mean, and you're LA just- and, and ho- hopefully sometimes Toronto. I got to, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah, you know, and we've been one of the blessings of the, this whole, you know, couple, two years is the, the advent of self taping and the advent of, you know, working from home. So yeah. Yeah. we've become sort of more global and you don't have to be as LA centric as say 10 years ago when it was like, you got to be there. You're not taking this seriously enough. Yeah. You know, so, that's-, so, that's so interesting. You definitely say that, right? Because everybody, you know, if you're not in LA, then you're not a serious actor or you're not in New York. You're right. not serious. But I mean, we know, we know that's not true now. That's just, no. that's just, it's not- just not. And Anybody? in fact, I am so thrilled to one by, I'm so thrilled by this advent of self taping and finding different locations and New Mexico opening up and all of these different places opening up because Oklahoma, like, Austin, all of yes, them. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. seeing all of these amazing actors come out of these cities and all of this just different colors that they're bringing to all of the work. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, in 20 years ago or whatever, it was like, you know, two places, that's it. Yeah. Uh, You know, what I also hear in that is we're getting to see other people have opportunities that they didn't have before. And I know that can be scary for a lot of people who are like, well, why am I not getting in the room? Or why am I not booking more? There's also a big pool of people who were like starving to work that are actually getting that opportunity now. And that makes it actually a little bit more palatable, right? Oh, thrilling. (laughs) Exciting. fun. Yeah. But before anybody moves to Vancouver (laughs) to get get their series regular like you did, what would you say about like your move? Would you say like, this is the space that I've thrived in or I've got a new mentality in there? I just, what would you say about Vancouver now? Well, ironically... Uh, when I moved to Vancouver, I actually booked Doogie technically in LA. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Isn't that, I mean, the second I left, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was there for th- what, 13 years. <laughs> and you're like, let go. You're like, buy LA like, and then bookings. <laughs> boom. I'm like, it's, it's insane. Right. And you hear stories about that happening all the time. And I don't know what that is. I don't know. There's some sort of magic secret sauce to sort of letting life happen sometimes, I think. Um, Yes. I think Vancouver is really, it's given me a lot of space to explore my work a lot more. Um, Why is that? Because I think, to be honest with you, I think it's because I have no friends here. I have, you know, I sort of moved here and then everything felt, you know, everything happened. Yeah. And it, it like left me with a lot of time to introspect Mm. and sort of get away from all of the things in my life and in Los Angeles that can be very distracting. Mm. Um, why are you looking at me when you say that? Why are you at me? <laughs> I am not like, distracting because, everyone. <laughs> Noted. No, Copy. but you, but yeah, you know, and I have a whole, I'd love to talk to you about all of that as well. And what it took for me in Los Angeles to sort of get to a, to a point where I could focus. Yeah. Because let's, let's go there. Let's go there because let's go there. Yeah. Anybody listening, like one of the big things that I want to talk about is your road to, you know, to Doogie, your road to the series regular, right. which is a crazy spot, but let's back up a little bit and yeah. let's go there. Like, what did it take, you know, to, um, I guess, get rid of distractions or, you know, yeah. just all that I want to hear it. Go for it. It takes a ton of focus. Like the first five years, I think living in Los Angeles was me just trying to learn how to adult. I didn't know how to adult at all. I didn't know about rent. I didn't know about, you know, so I had to really learn. And I also had to learn the culture of Los Angeles. And right. I didn't know I'm from a small town, like as most of us all are, but I didn't know that at the time. I thought we were all just like, I was like, there's rock stars everywhere. I don't know where I fit in, but I was, you know, totally enchanted and totally just like wanted to explore. But so that five years or whatever in a nutshell happened. But then I think once I started to really focus, once I started to be like, okay, there are things I am doing to sabotage myself to not get to where I need to be. Okay, give me I one of those. Not, like what? Like, on, before you go on, because I don't know, staying out too much, or, mm-hmm. or maybe even like honestly, like, you know, when you're hustling and you're working your day job all the time, like 
getting caught up in your day job. Mm-hmm. You know, the drama of what's happening at work or, you know, fighting with a coworker or watching other coworkers fight and gossiping about it. Or just being it. tired. Or just, being, or just tired. being so but tired. You get off of your day jobs like eight hours or whatever. You're tired. When you're, you know, when your your job ends at 3.30 in the morning and you have to wake up at, you know, 10 o'clock to do the job that you want to do, right? Which is mm-hmm. the acting and the prepping and things. So it's hard. It's a hustle. It's really, you're doing two full-time jobs, you know, before you get to, you know, fortunately get to the series regular role where that can be your full-time job, but that takes so much work. And I remember being in class and being like, yeah, well, guess what? There are series regulars on set right now that are doing this every day, that are prepping, that are working on their acting every day. Are you doing that? And I had to take a look at myself and be like, no, Mm. you know, what's the, what are the, what are the work ethic steps I need to take to start taking myself seriously and then start. And then of course, having other people take me seriously to be like, can I trust this person on set? Mm -hmm. Right. Which is at the end of the day, what we're all kind of getting hired for. So yeah, it took a lot of focus to one. A lot of focus. Yeah, but it sounds like focus on the right things, right? Focus on, right. But but the way I heard that, everyone out there listening, um, is that I had to take stock and what was going on, right? It's like taking an inventory of like, you know, what is happening, what's going on, and then take informed action from that, right? It's not just like, let me throw spaghetti up against a wall and take action. It's like, you know what? If I really want to get out of this day job, then I need to make a plan to get out of this. And what am I going to yes. do after that? Because you can get out of the day job and then there's like this hole and you're like freaking out in the vacuum <laughs> in the hole. So what are you putting in that hole? And it sounds right, like right. you made informed, you know, intentional stuff. Is that about right what I'm hearing? Yes, absolutely. And I've always fallen back on craft. That's always been, that's always been my longstanding relationship slash marriage with, acting, you know, Mm -hmm. has always been back to the work, back to the work, um, Mm -hmm. even now still. Right. So when you were shadowing, because you shadowed a little bit, was that focusing? And I know you worked with our favorite person like Jude. Uh, (laughs) Was that part of the restructuring refocus? Or was that part of the part where you're like, I dabbled in things everywhere. Now I'm backing out to go in a different direction. What part of that? Ah, That was all honestly just sort of an intuitive organic journey. Like I just was interested in it. I was interested in uh, the process of the showcase mm-hmm. and and all of that. And I just wanted to see what was up and like, see if I was something that sparked my interest. I'm like, is that what I want to do next? You know? Yeah. But I think in the same way that reading informs a writer, mm-hmm. I think, I think, you know, watching a director or watching informs acting and informs the process. And especially working with Jude on finding Ohana, you know, I think every actor should work crew at least once or, you know, because you just learn, you learn so much about the whole picture Mm -hmm. of how things work. And it actually takes a lot of pressure off of you as an actor, because I think sometimes actors can feel like, very like centric, you know, about like, oh, this is, you know, I don't want to blow this, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, it's a full, there's a big picture and you're yeah. part of that picture, you know? I, I did that when I, uh, when I shadow directed um, yeah. on my series on Bosch, yes. I got to see that it is about the actor, but it's such a small piece. Like as a director, there's so many people coming at you, you know, can they're talking about hair and makeup. They're talking about the cars. They're talking about the color of this. And it's right. such a, it, it takes the pressure off of you and it makes you up your game because I'm not going to be late to set, right? If they ask me to come yeah. out of my trailer and, and get there, there's so many pieces to get me there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, it's so why would you be late when there's like people waiting? And so I think it does inform a lot of that. And, yeah. you know, I love, I love Jude. And I think she's one of the top notch people in this business. And we're talking about Jude Wang, you know, um, who was our director. I mean, <sighs> who we worked with in the showcase, one of yes. the showcase, the ABC showcase, but also has gone on 
to forge amazing paths. Oh yeah. You know I mean? And I just watched her come. She decided she wanted to not do reality anymore, right? Reality TV anymore. Right. I'm going to make this jump over to scripted. And I was like, look at you go. <laughs> and then she went and, and then, then she just, and she's still going and she's still going. And I got yeah. the pleasure of working with her recently yeah. too, actually. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm yeah. Not gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to touch that one. I'm just going to, yeah, I, I'm going to coyly shy away from the rest of the details, but it was amazing. Yes. Um, I was thinking about Jude this morning and I was thinking about her leadership style. And as I was doing my makeup, I was thinking Jude is the kind of, she's the kind of leader that like, do you remember that feeling you had at recess when someone asked you like, Hey, do you want to, you want to come play dodgeball with us? And you're like, me? Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you, I would need another person. I'm like, yes. Oh my God. And just that feeling of being included in something fun. Yeah. That's how she leads. Like she leads with like, Hey guys, I have this great idea. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Rather than like, you know, just like the authoritative stuff that I've been used to. Yeah. It's such I a different way of doing things. I think she was one of those directors that and producers and everything else she does, but, but very inclusive in the sense yes. that I always felt like that she had the helm of this ship, right? Yep. That she knew exactly what she wanted, but she was always kind of like, what do you think? Let's collaborate a little bit. Always. And she said really? that, yeah, she said she learned that one of that from uh, Ron Howard and I'm paraphrasing, but she said, you know, list hear everyone, but listen to yourself, yes. but constantly she's constantly mm -hmm. including, mm -hmm. including, including, and Love then that. taking that and then leading, yes. right. Cause you, you can get scattered, I think in other forms of that, but no, she knows how to, to, to decipher when to go with an idea and when to use her leadership, which mm -hmm. is a very powerful way of, of, of leadering. Yeah. Leadering. I, I think she probably, you know, sounds like a mentor to you, of course. She, you know, yes. Yes. Definitely. She's such a good mentor. She really uh -huh. is. <laughs> really, really is. And yeah. I think she probably was really happy with, you know, for you, proud of you when you yeah. this, this series regular. Uh, yeah. on Doogie. Do you know, I keep shying away from it. I wrote it down so I could say it. I don't want to mess <laughs> it up. I don't want to mess it up. You know, it comes in, it's not Doogie Hauser, but it's Doogie. Kamaloha, Kamaloha. I don't know. Kamealoha. You got let's do this together. Kamealoha. Kamehe Kame Aloha. Kame I think if you break it up, Kame Aloha. Kame Aloha. You got Kame it. Aloha. Okay. Done. Uh, I'm, I'm very sensitive to names because of my no. you know, Duan. And so I always right. try to make sure I say it. I, 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 and I, but I don't want to shy away from it. But I'm so excited for you. I'm so oh. excited. And, you know, seeing you as a resident, you know what I mean? <laughs> On a, and stuff like that. It was, it's, it's just really cool to kind of see. And, you know, before we get too much into the show and the details, I would yeah. love to talk about your road to series regular. Right. Right. Yeah. And just, I mean, yes, the details of like the audition and stuff like that, if you care to share, but like, you mm -hmm. know, booking before that, I think we all think that the elusive series regular is happening and how do you get there? And yeah. I'd love to hear your take on that. Um, well, it, it is uh, elusive until it's not, it <laughs> right? happens very, very quickly when, um, when there's interest and it happens like every other self tape, I self taped this audition here. I coached it and I auditioned it and there was interest. Wow. Um, prior to that, though, I should say, I also tested for a show for the first time. Mm -hmm. I tested for Young Rock and, mm -hmm. and that experience was also crazy, right? Because we did a hair and makeup test and then I actually went in the room and tested. So yeah. that was a completely different experience wow. mm -hmm. for this one. Everything was virtual. So I wish that there was more to say, but everything was sort of a phone call. Wow. And well, that's, like, big. that's big. And, and they tested and I tested off of my self tape. I didn't test. You know, so, I, I, but that's a test. We had heard that before. You know, I was saying this on a, on a live just the other day, the people were saying that I know ABC has been doing their that using their self tapes to yes. pass up, you know what I mean? That's so what happens. That's why these self tapes have to be amazing, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> you yes. know, and, and one do. I wish I could stop saying, I'm trying to tell people stop calling them self tapes now, because what they really are are work sessions. 
we're putting our best work up there. Do you know what I mean? Sure, we're self-taping. That's what the act of it. But it's a work session. We're working the best we can. And then we're going to put it on tape for them, you know? And so yes. it sounds like, so you, did you have like a pre-read or a pre, pre self-tape, I should call it. And then you did a, a in-person or what, I mean, what is that? No, nothing. I no, self-taped really. off of the one tape. Really? Yes. And then I didn't hear anything for a little while. So I went back and watched it. <laughs> Because I was like, maybe it's too much. She's, I'm being too much. I went back and I always do that. I always no. go back and watch them. But yeah, I didn't hear anything. And then I did. And that's it, you know? And it's so strange because it happened like that, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that took 15 years. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. It's okay. so, it's hard for me to articulate, Juan, because it's like, yeah, there was a lot leading up to it. And then when I did the tape, that was it. It, yeah. it happened. And then I, and then I, you know, they were like, okay, you're going to network today. Yeah. And I'm in, you know, your tape is going to network. You mean, yeah. My agents like T she's like, so te technically you're testing your sweatpants today because you know, it was, I was just kind of waiting around at home. And then I found out the news like around December ish in the morning, like, you know, around Christmas. So it was like the best Christmas present of wow. my life. Yeah. I don't think yeah. we, I don't think you told us until like February, right? Maybe you kept it under wraps. I think. I, like was... <laughs> I don't think I did. I don't think we knew about this until we saw the deadline or something like that, right? And yes. I think it was about like fe January, February was a little yes. bit. Yes. Like, I don't right? think, I don't think I told anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You probably couldn't. You probably couldn't. That's okay. I probably couldn't. And I probably was like, if you tell people, they'll take it away from you no. or something like, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep this, but yeah, but well, now. but also you get to keep it for a little bit, right? Before yeah. you share it out there in the world. I think we think we got it doesn't like it it picks or it didn't happen or you know things like That's that. That's our but culture like, nowadays, right? Yeah, but what yeah. we get to do is just we work so hard to get to this place. We get to sit with it for a second. We get to just, just feel the relief. Yeah. And before just we like, get it out there, because what you start, when you put it out there, what you are doing now all of a sudden is I'm managing other people's, yes. you know, um, expectations or vibe or anything and on that. Exactly. Yes. Mm. And I'm sensitive to that because I know how that feels. So I'm like, mm, I'm going to wait, you know, and yeah. see how to do this diligently. Yeah. Um, I have a weird question yeah. for you and you don't have to answer this, right? Like I, I'm on a podcast. Ooh, I and, love that. And, and, and because I really want to like kind of demystify this process, you yes. know, what people think I got to get a co-star, then I got to get a guest star, then I got to oh, get yeah. a recurring, then I got to get a series. Break. That's the That's trajectory. And everybody, and I don't believe that, but it's okay if you do. And I guess I'm asking what was your trajectory? Was it like, I had a whole bunch of top of show guest stars and then I got a series regular. No, I you thought know? that's what happened. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was like, you know, first you start washing the dishes and yep. then you learn how to cook. And then I thought it was that way. I, I yeah. know Dewan, I had, I had done maybe five or six co-stars. Okay. I did my first guest star after I did Doogie. Look at that. Look yeah. At that. Was it fantasy Island? I, it was, uh, no, I love it fantasy wasn't. Island. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do too. It was so much fun. Um, it was two sentence horror stories. Uh, it was Vera's show. Yeah. Oh, which right. was another cool full circle moment for those of you. She's part of our, you know, showcase group or, mm -hmm. and, um, and she created a show and I got to be on that show. And that was my first guest star. And it was actually pretty terrifying. Cause I was like, I don't know how to be a guest star. <laughs> um, what is that? You know? And it was my first number one on the call sheets um, role. Yeah. So it was a lot Listen of learning. Listen to that, everybody. Like, this did not have the linear path that everyone is telling you you have to do. If what I hear from that Mapwana, because I I, I want to be clear, everybody, you can skip the line. That's yeah. what I keep telling everybody. You can skip this proverbial line, and everybody's like, no, you have to go do this and do this and do like that line. That is something that I think that people have put out there to keep people in their quote unquote place. This is right. our, it's our, yeah, it's our oyster. Like, let's go out and have fun. You know what I mean? You got your first guest star after your series regular. What? That's yeah. so taboo. <laughs> I know. Right. I felt the same way. And yeah. then like, and then all of a sudden navigating, going from, you know, seven to one and learning what that means. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
you what know, does that learning. Mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I know what it means, but let's talk about what does it mean? Seven to one. What? You know, I'm sorry. Like being number seven on the call sheet to being number one on the call sheet. And, you know, there is a difference in the way that mon- people monitor your behavior. Mm-hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. when you're, you know, seven and one and, and learning how to be like, okay, wow. Um, everything that I do, you know, is being monitored Mm -hmm. because I'm, you know, and, and learning how to be like, okay, cool. I, I I see that. How am I going to conduct myself? Right. And, and I thought about that a lot about how to conduct myself but I didn't really have anywhere to like put it in place until I did it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I would add to that, you know, because I think you're absolute 120% right. That what I would like to throw out there is when you're number seven, or I was 13 on Bosch, right. right, To remember to can keep conducting yourself as if you were number one or two always, because there's, you know, you will be number one soon. Yes. That's what we're going for. And all the people who you're, if you're acting out or doing anything at 13, they will remember. (laughs) Oh yeah. They will remember. But what I know about being number one on a call sheet is you are leading this ship. Yes. You are leading the ship and it is, it is, it is, it is, if you're throwing stuff or if you're having a tantrum that trickles, it feels it. And so remember, how do you want to lead your ship? How How do you you want to lead your ship? Yeah. And we all wanted to go, you know, we want to all do our jobs and go home early. And luckily yes. on that, and on that show, we did. We, <laughs> yep. We wrapped early, I think almost every night, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And that's also uh, Albert, the director who was fabulous and got the shots he wanted and, and would move on. And, you know, that collaboration was excellent. So, yeah. you know, Ma- Mapona, um, it sounds like you've done a lot of self discovery or self introspection you've been you've gone in a lot and this yeah. podcast is really all about mindset and yes. i'm just wondering if you can share or if there's something the thoughts that got you to this place right now right mm-hmm. because where we were 10 years ago when we worked at the showcase or however long it was yeah we feel like different people a little bit right yes I mean, we should, by the way. <laughs> I mean, cellularly, we are different people now. We are. And we have, uh, we have, you know, yeah. Yeah. So what thoughts got people. you to this place? Ah, uh, well, the thoughts, it, it's, it's an everyday process for me, Tuan. And I, I wanted to hear some of the things that maybe even you, you think about, because I know you're very introspective and obviously you have an entire podcast mm-hmm. about mindset and mm-hmm. it's everything everything Mm -hmm. that your mental game is everything. Everything. Um, and I fight, I, you know, I don't know if you've ever here. I actually have this book, the war of art, Yeah, this book, right. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I learned about resistance and, you know, the feeling inside of, I don't want to do that. Oh Mm -hmm. man, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I have to battle it every day to exercise, to meditate, to, to do anything positive for myself, I have to fight for it. Wow. Um, yeah. And to do self tapes and to stay in my, cl- and stay in my class. So that is it. It is me, you know, working through the steps that I know I need to take now mm. to get yeah. to a place where I'm really content, mm. not necessarily like happy, Yeah. but I can't tell you the feeling of the end of the day where I have done my self tape for the day. Mm-hmm. Or I have exercised for the day and how, how much better I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is sort of going to battle with yourself. And I do have to do that. Yeah. I mm-hmm. don't want everyone to feel like, you know, I think everyone feels that when it's mm-hmm. the days that are hard. And well, you're not a positive person. You're not a positive <laughs> person all the time. and You don't just get it done. Right. <sighs> it's exhausting. I wish, I wish it was easy. In, in fact, yesterday is a self tape and <laughs> I was editing it and I just looked over to my partner and was like, man, acting is hard (laughs) because it was a really heavy scene and I had a lot of visualizing to do and it was really sad. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, but you just keep going. Yeah. You do just keep going and you just keep going and you, and you self-love, you got to self-love because if you don't self-love, you'll self-destruct. And I've done that. I've done both. Yeah. Now, you know, I know what both sides feel like. 
I try to make sure that everybody knows when I when I, a couple of things about me because I think people will see me and they think automatically, oh, you're a positive guy, Duan. You're so totally. Positive. You're such a. And the thing is, like that to me is, I just have a lot more tools in my tool belt to pull out when I'm not feeling. You know what I mean? When I'm feeling, ah. Oh, I didn't book that or uh, that pin didn't turn into a booking or mm. all the, or just like, I just don't feel like fucking doing this self tape. Excuse my language. <laughs> yes. I don't feel like doing this self. Like, it's like, come on, what's the point? And then you have to self love. Oh, you're feeling a little bit of this. Oh, here's what's going on. Let's take that time for yourself to want. And then we'll get back on the horse from a different space. So is that what you do? Like, do you have to like self talk yourself into these spaces like yes. is that a tool that you use i do use it's funny you ask me so i'm going to show you something everybody if you're watching this this is not planned at all um yes. that to make sure what we try to do is we try to push ourselves from that space of resistance right yes. and that is not going to produce the stuff that you think you want to produce because on the other side of that you're like oh right and so i have to get myself back in alignment with where where from a place of ease, from a place of joy, from a place of like, oh, here's the space of um, a possibility. Yeah. Right? I try to get back into that space and yeah. then act from that space. What yes. I do to keep myself very, very like in alignment as much as possible so I can like live in that space a lot mm -hmm. is I ask myself questions from the space where I want to be. Oh. Starting, with, starting with, I say, you can't see this, but I, it says, what would series regular Dewan do? Mm. Right. And because if I want to be that and I'm there instead of I'm thinking those thoughts already. So it's not a big jump from where yes. I am. It's already the space of where I'm at. Exactly. So when you're talking about earlier, I didn't want to cut you off. But when you're talking about focus, where you're saying, I don't want to go out drinking or hanging out with my friends or something like that. I ask myself questions from that space so that it's not a big jump. What what does the um what does the the awesome parent Dewan want? Um, I want to where does he want to operate from? So that I'm not operating from this space of like these kids are driving me crazy, <laughs> right? but I'm operating from a different space. Do I always achieve that? No, but that is what my alignment, I keep it in spaces so that I, we, I can see that. I oh, answer that from that space. That's how I would say to your, what I do often, because Mabwana, we've been on auditions. If we look at our catalog, we probably have done a hundred auditions over this pandemic. At least, yeah, yeah. And so but how do we keep motivating ourselves, right? People think, I, you, maybe other people come from a space of constant motivation. No, I have to just like a shower. I got to re-motivate myself. Every, yes. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm in class. I didn't think mm -hmm. like once, you know, there's, there's a thing that you think, okay, well, once I'm a series regular, like, why don't I, you know, yeah. it's like, no, because that's one character, mm -hmm. you know, I still have all these other things that I want to keep working on so that those things don't lose their flexibility. Yeah. And for me, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I get self tapes, I get really nervous and mm -hmm. I'm, and so I like to have, I like doing three a week or whatever a week so that when I get them, I'm not like, Oh my God, how do I prepare? <laughs> no, I've been in practice. I've been doing it. I've been doing this. I know how to do this, you know? <laughs> yeah, but you have to remind yourself of that, right? Yes. It's, it's like go time. You know, when I try to talk to my tribe about when it's go time, like we don't want to spend a whole day, half a day, you know, scooping yourself out of this place no. of what it's like, it's go time. And you remember what I heard you say was, oh, no, no, no. Remember, this is what we've been preparing for. Yeah. I don't want to have to rev up to it either. <laughs> I don't want to have to be like, Okay, let's rev up. I want to already kind of be walking. It's in your body. I it's want to be going because yeah. I just don't like that other feeling. But I will say that's you know, the best workouts I have and the best tapes I have sometimes come from the deepest mm -hmm. resistance days. Those days mm -hmm. where I'm just Good. like Arr. um yeah, I always like for some when I pop out of it and then I get into it again. Yeah. I don't know. There's just some maybe it's because I find the joy again like you did. Right. And for me, what keeps me excited about tapes or just auditioning is I think about one thing I want to focus on. Or first of all, I think about what gets me excited about this mm -hmm. script. Like what's my in? What gets me excited about this role? And then I will be like, well, maybe I'll just focus on stillness for this one. Mm. Or maybe I'll just focus on really getting the words down and not 
no ad libbing. And then that way I don't have to like, then my mind won't go into all chaos mode that I can be like, okay, let's just focus on one aspect at a time Mm. so that I don't feel like this script is this whole big thing that I've never done before. (laughs) I think I can hear, I can hear everybody listening to this podcast, like asking, like, how do you prepare for a character? When, when, when something comes in, you get an audition, it goes, ding, you see it on your phone and it's like, great. What do you do to get into that character at that moment to get before it gets to tape? Um, I procrastinate. I, mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I thought there was going to be a deep answer there. I'm sorry, you all. I'm totally I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> we were on a different level. I, I go started. and eat a snack. <laughs> I go and eat a snack. And then I think about it being due and I stress out for like two hours straight. And then I get to work. <laughs> So we have a process. So we have, we have a, a process. process. We have a process. <laughs> that was amazing. That was uh, amazing. okay. So at, post snack, post, post snack. Po- well, now we're we're in the game now. Okay. okay. I mean, you know, I think it varies, um, but I, you know, I think half of it is organic and what just comes from the script, like the things that I'm feeling or thinking, and I'm like, oh, I, I think this person is this or this person is that. Uh, and then I just, for me, I'm very technical based. So I, you know, I look up the network, I look up the show, I look up the show runner, I look up what they've done before. I generally try to find for me, I think the tone of the show or the tone of the yeah. past shows that that person has done just so I can get an alignment with how they approach the work. Right. And then, you know, and then it's sort of a, hodgepodge mishmash of my work Mm -hmm. and me being like how can I bring my most genuine self to this and also honor the tone yeah yeah right in so many words I do a lot of that too I have a whole process you know with it but I think more importantly now more than anything else what I'm really doing is diving into character work cool you know, because I feel like I, I got the technical, that stuff is already for me. It is great. I already know what I'm going to do. I know the technical, I know that stuff that takes its, its place. And so now what I really, 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 you know, after Bosch, while I was in Bosch was yeah. really, I just wanted to love these characters. Yeah. I just really wanted to honor that, you know, more than anything else, just Same. honor those, you know? And so however you get into it, I think we got to get into it, right? For those characters. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I did yesterday. It was like, man, this storyline is real for someone. This is yeah. someone going through it. Yes. And, and I'm, I would be potentially playing that. So I, mm-hmm. you know, bringing the respect to, to that role, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think, Lana, once you, you've done it, you've done some of these roles, like, like when I was on Grey's Anatomy and to hear the fans connecting with it. And they're just like, this reminded me of my dad when he was going through cancer or something like you, we mm. don't show up anymore from a space of, um, you know, um, I don't, it, it's not amb- ambiguity. Ambu- <laughs> I can't say the word. This dad is brain. Awesome. I'm not going to cut I this. I love you on dad brain. Do not cut it. Oh, I love you on dad brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? I'm not going to show up from that space because I'm like, it does touch somebody. Right. It does. And and so it's really, really important. I I, I think, you know, what we do as actors, we have to understand that we are casting spells. Mm-hmm. We are That's diving. A really good reminder. So I think it's in, and, and people are in this. And if they're inviting us into our, their home week after week after week, or for a binge, we better be, you know, showing the F up, I think. <laughs> so. I think you're right. So oh my nice. gosh. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for letting me in your guys' house. That's yeah. really, wow. And, 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 to, your, and to your kids. Yes. Cool. Like you are. You're like you, I hang out with your kids. You hang out with some of my most prized mm. possession, like, and I can't even call it possession, this thing that I get to show up. Like, I am like, you think about, we just saw this Blue's Clues thing, right? Where uh, Steve just came back and he Stop, talked you're about. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I, I saw well, that. Woo. Well, you think about it. You are that. You are that. You are showing up in these kids' lives as they're seeing themselves in you. That is you on Disney Plus. You know, that is you. And so so for me to like let my kids sit there and watch this and, sh- and grow up with you, that's important. You got to show up. You got to show up. You got to. I if you all are watching this, I'm making my want to tear up. <laughs> like what amazing perks of the job that, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. 
sometimes I think you can forget that because you're auditioning yeah. and you're doing all the things and you're doing what else can I do in this career to, you know, all those things that you've, you know, yeah. Yeah. Touching base with that feels really good. It does. I, I agree. I just want to ask a couple more questions that I are Please. burning for me because I think, you know, we think once we become a series regular and I've seen that side that mm-hmm. we think your entire seven or eight days per episode, you're slammed. You know, your time commitment is when, because when I become a series regular, I'm going to be working all the time. All what, day. Would you, all, what would you say to that now about the time? <laughs> Oh, I feel so bad because sometimes I'd only work like one day (laughs) and I would be so appreciative, but also been like, oh, I'm so sorry, my hair, like my makeup artist. (laughs) Um, Yeah, because that I did not know that one. The reality was I was like, oh, which was nice because, you know, like I said before, I had only done co-stars. So it was really daunting. I thought that I was like, oh, no, I'm going to work every day. No, I sometimes I had two pages or a page. Mm-hmm. I came in, I said a line and that was my day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I saw it with, you know, everybody's like, Oh boy, you're, yeah. you're doing this and you would run and you're going to be working so much. And I was like, if we have eight episodes, eight, eight days per episode, I might be there max four. that's max. And that, that means like, at least that fourth day I'm running and not talking. Like we're like catching the perp, but right. like the majority of it is I'm there for two or three days. That's the max of it. You know what I mean? Or, or one day per episode, they get all of our stuff in one day and they do it. Right. I think that's important to, for everyone to hear as well. Why do I think that's important? Because everybody thinks you're going to be doing something different as a co-star. That you're going to be doing as a guest star. That you're going to be doing as a, you know, top of show series regular, yeah. bring your A game at all levels. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At all absolutely. Levels. Speaking of which, um, yeah, I would, I was usually anywhere from a half an hour to an hour early. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. to get into the space, just so I was like, I'm here, do my yeah. COVID test, do whatever I need to do just to get into the space. Does that helps me get on my A game? And yeah. then I don't bring my phone. I said, no phones on set for me. Oh, it is, huh? All season. All season. No phones on set for you. Listen to that. I don't know Having, how I would, I would, li- I would live. <laughs> well, I mean, you have kids too. So there's that like extra responsibility of like ha- needing to have your phone. I didn't have it. And uh, it was an experiment. I didn't realize like, I don't do that in my normal life. Wow. Like I don't, I don't say, Hey, no phones for an hour or mm-hmm. no phones for two hours. It's fascinating. Yeah. But you do that. you. Yeah. But you really, it was good. I think I made friends that way. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because our phones are a little bit of a shield, right? It's a little bit of a comfort, like a blanket. It's like, oh, if nobody's going to talk to me or sit with me in the lunchroom, then oh. I can just get on my phone instead Especially of. Especially when you're co-starring or you're guest starring for the day and you're a day player and mm-hmm. Viola Davis is sitting across from you and you like, this is How true. to get away with murder, you all. Sorry. This is true. I didn't bring my phone and they were all on their phones and I was just sort of sitting there. I was really nervous because I'm just like around all these people. Like I don't know what to do with myself. So I like, I think I eventually did bring my phone that day. But yeah, you know, it can be tough tough. to sit there with yourself and with other people and be like, so I bring a book now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I bring a book. (laughs) This probably is not a question for you though, right now, but I just wonder, do you ever like, or if you don't like, do you ever think of quitting anymore? Like, you know, like sometimes we go through these days where we're like, I'm just done. I'm just done. I mean, you probably don't yeah. anymore, but no, I do. <laughs> you do. Yeah. I, you all, she is totally answering these the way I did not think she would answer it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So, so, yeah. I, I, in fact, I just looked up Felicia Rashad yesterday because uh-huh. she's the dean at Howard University now. And I was like, what does a dean do? Wait, so wait, I started, the real dean? I didn't know that. Is she like she's a real the dean? dean of uh well she's the dean of like, like honorary dr- dramatic honorary? no like dramatic arts she does the oh. the dr- i don't i'm sorry howard university if i'm not saying this right but she is the dean of like that yeah. sector yeah, and i was like oh huh. so she's not acting anymore maybe she is I'm like what is she doing what does a dean do <laughs> maybe i can be a dean oh my god so you've enrolled in school like there's an application out there already ready you're like <laughs> So if you guys need a dean for your school, <laughs> it's something I've been contemplating um, and s- instead of continuing my acting career, apparently. <laughs> oh, 
good. All right. No, All right. but you know, you know, like I think I'm very realistic, right? I no, I don't want to give up on acting. I like I really am in this n- new and wonderful stage, but you know, shows end, things happen. And you know, that was another thing that I thought that I think is sort of a fallacy that once you become a series regular, like I'm set, I'm yeah. good. I got a job. Da, 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 da. No, they're going to come to me. Everybody's going to come running. Everyone's, I'm, I'm off ICAA. Hi, CAA. Hey, hi, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. And know, not, in a, not, not in a, not in a, I, it's a depressing way, but no, no. Oh, this is the reality of it all. Yes. That's, that's exactly what, we, what I want mean. to be clear. Everybody out there, we're joking, but the reality of it all, we do yes. mystifying that. It's like, now that I'm on set, now that I've gotten this series regular, I'm still out there producing and working. Yeah. Mm. And, and trying to develop like new dreams. Like what's the, you know, what is something, uh, you know, I've, I've accomplished this beautiful goal. You know, what else do I want to accomplish in the world? You know, those kinds of things I do think about, but no, as far as quitting acting, I think I'll always like, there's a part of me that'll probably, I, you know, I used to take breaks when I was very frustrated for the day. I'll be like, I quit acting today. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. And then tomorrow I get up and I, I do it again, you know? Yeah. 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 My poo. My poo. <laughs> it, I like, I'm so, I'm, I'm always so like excited to see your name. I think you're just good energy. You're good people. Aww. And, you know, I can't believe we did the showcase. What now? What is that? Six- Some of them all years ago. Yeah. <laughs> And we were like 15. Yes, um, we we're very, very no. young. We're not going to put that out there. But um, No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, 2014. 2014 for that. It is. That's right. What do you do in your day-to-day that keeps you inspired? Um, I started knitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I started doing other things mm. to inspire me to come back fresh. Yeah. I'm in a class. Mm-hmm. That inspires me to keep going when there are slow periods or no auditions. Yeah. Virtual? Oh, yeah, a virtual class, but I get sent tapes. You know, I get sent assignments mm-hmm. three or four times a week. Oh, wow. Good. So that's a challenge I wanted to give myself for eight weeks. Oh, wow. Good. Um, yeah. I, I watch shows that I love. Mm-hmm. I cook. Yeah. Yeah. Which I uh have become fond of slowly but surely yeah and when you what put, about you what do you do to inspire yourself I'm, What's I'm, gonna, I'm gonna answer that but when you when you put your hands up like this you said oh i saw a ring on your finger i'm just gonna <gasps> oh yeah and then i i get engaged i guess in my free time <laughs> i was like i don't everybody i did not know that and this is one of my friends it's so funny i it's some because i didn't post it it, when we were talking about those things that you sort of keep to yourself yeah, yeah. for some reason, it was like at the same time the show was coming out. And I was just like, I was like, I think I'm just going to keep it for myself for a little while keep and it. tell the people that I want to tell like this face to face rather than, you know, one sweeping post, yeah. which is fine. I think that's great, too. I just wanted to do it differently, I guess. It's amazing. He's, he's but- pretty He's pretty amazing. He's very great. <laughs> That's another thing. I'm very lucky. I have a really good support system with him, you know? No. Yeah. I should acknowledge that because that's really important. I did not have that, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, how long we've been together. He's been a really big support. He really supports my my career. He is my reader. He is yeah. the person that coaches me. Mm-hmm. He is half of this whole package, you know? It's important. So. We, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge We you. acknowledge you. Well, I think it's important because I think it's important for all of us as actors and people in the creative arts to have the good people around you that support you and love you because, you know, we because mm-hmm. we're, we're scrutinized by everything. Usually that's just part of the business. So to come home to support feels really good. And I think you asked me what inspires me. I think that what do I do for inspiration is I do, I get to work with a lot of actors. I get to work with a lot of actors this way and um, they inspire me with, you know, their dreams and hopes. And I try to like really uh, put my best foot forward when I'm showing up as a coach. But one of the things that really gives me inspiration, and I I don't know what this means. I haven't dove into this, but when I get to get outside of LA, 
when I get to yeah. see there's life, even if I go to Big Bear or I go, oh. if I just get out of, you know, my yes. life for a bit and travel and do things, I'm always inspired, you know, and I come back refreshed. I come back with a different mindset. And it's, it's very interesting to me. When the pandemic hit, I wanted to go live in Austin. Oh. Right? Just try something because I know we, we're not, you know, we don't have to be here in LA anymore. No, right. And yeah. thankfully my career, people know me and I can still be in another place and put stuff on tapes like you're right. doing. Right? right. So that's, that's the fact that we don't have to be here anymore is really amazing to me. And that's, yeah. that inspires me, inspires me. So my point, I'm going to leave you with this question here. I'm going to leave you with this one last question. And it's really, what would Mapuana right now, uh-huh. Mapuana right now, uh-huh. say to younger actress Mapuana? Say to the younger actress Mapuana. Oh my gosh. Hi, Mapuana. I'm a big fan of your work. I'm <laughs> loving this bohemian like shit you're doing right now. Um, I'm going to need you to close your tab. Uh, and I'm going to need you to go home <laughs> and get some freaking sleep. And do not make pasta in the middle of the night anymore because your metabolism slows down when you're in your thirties. And then we have to work all of that off. So stop, put the freaking water away right now. Mm. Okay, good. Oh, and also there's going to be an actor. His name's Dewan Johnson. He's going to read you one day on how you drive and he's going to be right. And you should listen to him. What did and, I say? And <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> Saying, how do you bring this up in the last minute? <laughs> tell me, we, all right, you all, we're 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 over time, but I'm gonna tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I'm sorry. Whatever. <laughs> don't be. She needed yeah. to hear it. <laughs> Mafuana, thank you so much. Uh, It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. I hope anything that, you know, hopefully what we've said here is resonating with people and, and helps them keep going a little bit one more day. I'm sure it did. I'm sure. Good. I'm glad.